Chamel. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Chamel here. Nice to meet you guys. Oh, I got a couch. I'm not really sure you guys are. Let's take you over, man. Let's right here. Oh, this is nice. There you go. Give, Thank give, you, guys. Give him a San Antonio welcome. He is Christopher Savant, the voice of Vegeta. That's good to see you. All right. see you. Uh, Come on, San Antonio, we can do better than that. No. Oh, yeah. 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 Here you are here! Woo! Uh, I love couch panels. I love couch panels because our autograph chairs are very uh, stiff, and so we get to relax. Plus, we stand. Do you know, wait, hold on. I'm so sorry. No, 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 i got to no, reminisce no, 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 no. for a second. Do you, do you remember what show we were at? where they, they not only put uh, couches up on the stage, but they had like fake plants, and it looked like a better- Between one. the two ferns? <laughs> that, was, that was when we were in a baseball stadium. Dude, that was the one where the dude from, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Anchorman kept jumping up on stage with us. Uh, oh, D Dave Keckner. Yes. Yeah, yeah, he kept jumping the, on stage. The green room was literally right yeah. behind the panel room. So everyone that you loved and respected had to listen to your panels. Uh, while they were eating lunch. And so he would always go, hey guys, how's it going? And he'd just come sit up on everyone's <laughs> panel. Well, first of all, welcome to San Antonio. Thank we you. We appreciate you taking your time. Hopefully San Antonio is treating you right. The good weather. Good yeah, weather. that's yeah. great. I first came to San Antonio in 1985. I was 85, 86, 87. I was yeah. an all-state band and orchestra, so I get to come to TMEA every year. Is and, it uh, is it okay we San Antonio claims Goku as you know their own? Uh, you can here? claim me yeah. anytime you want. That's fine with me. That's how, that was my first experience of San Antonio. Yeah. Every state? year we would come here for all state. Were you choir. an all state choir? Yeah. Okay. Oh, what nice. year were you all state choir? Because you're you're younger than me. All four years because no one else has deep voices in high school. Well, I'm only three years. They wouldn't let me audition. <laughs> I couldn't audition in ninth grade because I was in a different city where they wouldn't let ninth graders audition. And like, oh, you got a deep voice. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 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 Well, what yeah. years though? What years were we there together? Uh, probably not. No, because I was 85, 86, 87. No, I was, I was later than that. Actually, it was the four years beyond that. Four years beyond that, because you were four years behind me in college also. We went Wait, to the no, same no. college, but not at the same time. Yeah. Think, right? Nice, yeah. nice. Hey, small world, I mean, yeah. look at that, yeah. Well, as you can see, fans are here. They've been lining up since, you know. You guys have been amazing ago. all yeah, weekend, exactly. blowing my mind. Really good, you know, lines have been long, loving your, the, the, the fan receptor for you guys. I'm gonna start with Sean, Sean. You, yeah, you yeah. Know, I mean, this, I guess it never gets old. It, right. it never gets old, just seeing the type of love that you, the character, what you brought to life, to the big and small screen. I mean, can you tell everybody how that experience is? Um, I, well, you, you, if anybody who knows me well knows I, I tend to overthink things and I'm a, a bit of an existential philosopher. So I, I, even when I first started on the show, I lay in bed and I'm thinking about the, the, the fame of it all. And I remember I'd walked into a Target at that point and heard my, my voice across a bunch of TV screens. And I was thinking, little kids' brains are forming in my my waveforms of my voice are going into their heads forever. And I felt shock, fear, and awe at the responsibility of potentially affecting so many kids like that. You know, when I, when I first started, I was like, it was like 2001 or two or something, you know, when I started thinking this. And you were like, what sort of profound effect am I having on children? And then you hear, is that all you've got? Yeah. Is that all you've got? <laughs> like, is your voice was it's one of those like inflatable yeah, those, like punching bags? I will not let you beat me. Yeah. I'm gonna win this fight. Yeah. <laughs> Just over and over, and then just, and I, and I think as you know, when you, when you, as an actor, when you, when you, you know, look, it's about the show. There's no question. Right. I'm just bring one of the characters to life. But you wonder, and, and you know, and your producers, you know, not my producers, but other producers like to tell you that it doesn't matter. But you wonder um, if, if uh, you, their, their performance itself sure. is having any genuine effect. Uh, and it's not something I think about a lot. But you wonder only because you're putting a lot of energy into right. it. And only in the last few years I, have I come to accept that maybe, you know. When a very strong big men come up to me and cry their eyes out um, <laughs> because they've been through hell and in their life in some way, and somehow my voice is a part of them getting through right. that, is there's no greater gift as an artist as a human, and uh, it, it's really just the opportunity to be in that show like that is is a uh, it, it's still surreal to this day, and I've been doing it 24 years, wow. so it's it's surreal as hell, and I, all the everything I have over to Dragon Ball. I mean, Chris is one of my best friends, if not my best friend. And everything I have, my girlfriend, my, my, my circle of close friends, everything I, is all because of Dragon Ball. Nice. So nice. I remember yesterday, uh, it, I, I don't get to always sign next to Sean, and when we do, it's usually really loud, but I gotta give your convention center credit. The acoustics are amazing. It's oh, not yeah. like overly loud. I can actually hear most of what Sean's saying over there, uh, for better or worse. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> but I, I, just on that same topic, I saw some dude walk up to you and you're like, Hey, I mean, he's this massive dude, probably, you know, works out, has at least worked out once, which is more than I have. And he's like, <laughs> uh, 
And you go, you look kind of familiar, dude. Have I met you? He goes, in my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and I didn't turn it was sure was gonna go homoerotic at that point, but you know, which is fine. I, I can respect that. I, I'm a handsome man, but uh, no, I, I have no idea. But um, I just wanted to make a joke. But yeah, he was he was wonderful. Yes. And that kind of uh, that kind of look, I can tell you this. Um, Chris knows that it, 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 from the get go. I just go hard. I go bigger, go home. Yeah. I just go hard. Uh, and the show demands it. You can't. That's the thing about Dragon Ball. And I know this is talking to other casts from different languages sometimes when I've talked to them. Mm -hmm. it, it's all, it's special to every single cast. I mean, more than any other show. It's for some reason, I think it's Akira Toriyama's genius and the energy and vibration he put into that and then how it's propagated and then how it's gotten to your heads and then how you guys charge it up more like a big spirit bomb. Right. It just keeps going and going and going. And so it, it, when you, you realize that you, you, the show demands this, you, the show, do, you cannot right. get attached to the dragon and, and let go. It will not let you go. Um, it reaches into your soul, and then you're done. And uh, playing Goku is like sticking your fingers into a hundred thousand volt socket, and you know, hoping you don't die while you're while you're doing it. You know? It is a bit of an abusive relationship yeah. that we have on the show. Yeah, it's. I mean, I've, I've seen the YouTube videos of you guys behind the scenes, just giving it you all, and it's like, whoa, how do they even survive those? You things? have no choice. God, it's like, wow. First of all, I hope you approve of the shirt that I'm wearing today. I do approve of the yeah, shirt, yeah, yes. You can F off. <laughs> I don't care, I don't. I love that shirt. Spoiler actually. alert, it is a Vegeta, Vegeta Majin, Majin shirt. Vegeta yeah. shirt. Yeah. Yes, yes, Best yes. form, arguably, of Vegeta yeah. in the show. It's wonderful. Uh, I said something like this. Chris, hey, you were speaking of Vegeta, the character you brought to life. You know, as my friends have gotten older with me, we grew up, you know, with Dragon Ball and everything. It's, it's weird to see them, how they've get, understand Vegeta more now as they've gotten older versus in, studying the character versus they were younger. You, you know, now they can appreciate it. Do you ever feel that perhaps his character is just misunderstood? I used to joke that Vegeta was uh, based on somebody who bullied Akira Toriyama in high school or something. Because <laughs> he's so mean to Vegeta in the show. Like, so mean to him that like he just never gets a win. But the thing I love about Vegeta is that ultimately, over time, even though he may not win any fights with Goku, except maybe one, but I don't want to spoil it. Uh, maybe uh, he still wins in the in the character development category, right? Yes. He yes. still he still wins as far as like he won everybody's hearts over because he was he yeah. was awful. I do have a fondness for Vegeta these days. I do. Um, it, yeah. yeah, and Sean, I, Sean, I've talked about this. In fact, when asked what Sean's favorite part of the series is, he's like, "It's the Goku Vegeta show." You know, it's yeah, the Goku the Vegeta relationship. relationship. Yeah, yeah. It's the show. But yeah, he just—he is such a, a great redemption story. Yes. And uh, and it's amazing to me that Akira Toriyama. He, I mean, I've, it's been told. I've been told that he's a bit of an agoraphobic dude. He doesn't get out of his house very much. He stays <laughs> home. It's yeah, yeah. very rare to see the creator of Dragon Ball outside of his house. And it's very clear to me that he's on the internet, though. Like, he, yeah, yeah. he spends a lot of time, because he understood how to treat Yamcha in Dragon Ball Super when he makes him die on, like, home plate again. Home plate, yeah. <laughs> in his own game. And, like, he understands that, relate the, the love that people have for Vegeta, or else there's no reason Vegeta should have been in the show. Like, but I think the two of them, balance each other out so well. And who knows if that was his original intention or not, but it almost seems like the show is heading in this very yin-yang direction where they're going to be kind of these equal opposing powers forever. And that's what's going to like kind of power the entire universe. Yeah, yesterday's panels, uh, there were some fans that were asking the other voice actors some questions. And one question that stuck with me, I said, I'm gonna ask Chris and Sean this question is, do y'all look at memes Y'all look at oh, me. I've seen them and say, oh, I put up one. Right? I wrote, made one and put it up. Remember that one where it's like the two girls fighting and then the guy or something? And yes, I just Goku and said, said Yamcha. I made that one. I, I made that one up. <laughs> I can't remember which one. They're like drunk or something or they got a bong or something. There's two girls fighting and the guy's and it's like Goku, Vegeta, and Yamcha. And I put it up on you would, you, you would see them. I mean, you got to have some appreciation just to see like, they're memes now. Your characters are memes. I mean, there were memes. I, I think. Vegeta was one of the first memes of all time, and it happened a long time before. The over 9,000 business. Yeah, before yeah. I figured out what the hell was even going on. People were coming up like, say over 9,000. I'm like, why? Like, <laughs> say over 9,000, just do it, just do it. Doesn't matter. I'm like, it. explain yeah. it. 
And then finally I just gave up and started saying it. And then I figured out what it was. I heard there's some trending audio right now. It's like, don't interrupt the grill master. Because <laughs> What's that a, about? Yeah. yeah. It was a scene from uh, Dragon Ball Super where Piccolo's uh, oh, the yes, grill. Yes, yes. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. And then, did, did you ever envision this series then becoming into movies and then mainstream movies now and then pop culture it's so embedded in the fiber Dude, of this movie. whole thing for me has been here's what's cracked me up about it on the one hand no way on the other hand you have the experience of when it happens yeah well duh but you didn't expect it it's right. so weird so because when they called me for the first movie I, I got a call you know uh i think i'm two hours behind i was in california and justin cook called me he's like hey sean we're gonna start up a dragon as before super and everything and i thought i was done with the show and I was half asleep, and I said, we're gonna do Dragon Ball, and I was like, oh, shit. Uh. <laughs> uh, it's not that I don't love Dragon Ball, it's just that I was like, okay, I don't have to scream anymore. And, and I complain about it a lot, but don't, don't worry, I love it, I do. I complain, because yeah, I, I do, I don't wanna make people think I don't, like, and I've, I've noticed that a lot of people online, I'm like, look, here's the deal, it is hard, it is painful, but when I see your re reactions, and when I'm done doing it, and I watch it back, I'm like, yeah! I mean, it's definitely like you ripped your shirt off in a wrestling match. It's know? like working out, which yeah. it's just, oh, yeah, so, so I've been told. Um, so, and then when that movie came out, I was really surprised because yeah. I'm like, we're going to do a theatrical release. I'm like, ah, it'll be great. It'll be fine. But I did not know what they had brewing in Japan, yeah. you know? And I know pretty much for a fact, they, for, back then they said, we're going to turn this into more of a global brand, global phenomenon. And, and they, oh, they beef, spruced up their forces in Japan and spruced up the, 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 the offices in the U.S. And they, they're mm -hmm. really trying to push this thing. I believe from the get-go, there could be amusement parks. Could be, it's got enough rich yeah. world to it make does. it into, you it know, really something does. even bigger than it is, which Chris, is amazing. What do you like about your character? What do you like about Vegeta? Not too much. I mean, what's, what's, what's there to like about the guy? No, I, I love Vegeta. He's like... No, well, you gotta give the French Vegeta answer. <laughs> oh, we gotta hear this That's now. Funny. French Vegeta's yeah. funny, but... Sean's making reference to, there was a book that was written called The Tao of Dragon Ball. Or like over 9,000 or something by Derek, yeah. Derek Padula. The, he's, he's kind of a Dragon Ball Z scholar, basically. He's, he's obsessed with Dragon Ball. He's written books about it. And along the way, he has interviewed all these different cast members from all, all over the world. world. And so everybody, he's, he asks a similar question, what does, what does Dragon Ball like, mean Like what you asked. Yes, yeah. Literally the same question. And the, you know, all these voice actors. long like, answers. Like, all oh, the things I have done. Da, 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 da. Jose, in, in, in Mexico, they have these long yeah. paragraphs. My mind's like five chapters long. Yeah. Sean's like the rest of the book. <laughs> I like, give a long answer what it means to me, right? They get to the French Virginia, he's like, it was nothing. And so we wrote, we told Derek, okay, do you want to write French Vegeta and ask him if he wants to add any more? Because we all added lots of paragraphs. So he wrote French Vegeta, and French Vegeta wrote back, no, I, that is fine. I do. <laughs> he was so quintessentially French. I adore that man. It was just a show. It was a show. I made some friends, yeah. whatever. <laughs> you know, it was. It was great. Does it ever just stun you guys sometimes to see how? Mainstream, you know, Hollywood movies, movies themselves. I was talking to the crowd before y'all came out, saying how you have the directors of the Matrix come out and say, yeah, we kind of borrowed from the Dragon Ball Z fights. I you remember know. the South Park movie, and I wasn't yeah. sure if it was a Dragon Ball uh, right? reference, but in the South Park movie, in the song, yeah. Kyle's mom's a big king, Kamehameha bitch. Yeah. I thought that was, it was like, you made it. Or something like it was yeah. in the song. And I was like, were they saying King Kamehameha? I don't think they said King or just Kamehameha. Yeah. <laughs> Kyle's mom's, I was something in the lyrics of the song and I was in the theater going, is that a Dragon Ball reference? <laughs> <laughs> what are you, Chris, seeing those references? In and that was in 2000 or something, in, yo. In other genres. It's, a, it's everywhere. I don't even notice it anymore. Like it's, wow. cosplay's not even, like, Dude, I saw it on The Flash with Grant Gustin, and he's gonna be at a show with us soon. In one episode, he, 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 he lost his memory on The Flash, which I refer to as the Flizzash, because I don't know, I just like the show. <laughs> and, um, and, and in one of the scenes, I, I screenshot it and sent it to you, um, he, he lost his memory, and his wife goes, you were a huge Dragon Ball fan. She's trying to remind him of his memory. You love Dragon Ball Z, so the character Flash. Wow. And, and I was like, oh my God, screenshot subtitles, oh my God. So I put the subtitles on so you can see it, right? So many, uh, so many it's, uh, like references to Dragon Ball and hip hop and rap music too, yep. which is really yeah. cool. You can't like go 15 minutes without hearing Oh, I've been to Big Sean's house twice because That's of it. true. He's a fan of mine, which oh, made me nice. want to cry. I was like, oh my God. That Don't guy's... you call yourself like medium sized Sean? I call myself, when well, his presence, I refer to myself as medium Sean, which they all think is funny. <laughs> I go, I, and they want to call me little, medium or little. I'm like, look, give me a bump. I know I'm not really medium relative to your bigness, Big Sean, but if I could have a bump to medium, that would be great. He thought that was hilarious. And uh, he was yeah. great. He was a wonderful host, wonderful man. And I got to work with, uh, I got to work with a, a 
pop artist too, named John Bellion. I don't know if you guys are familiar with him. He was a huge Dragon Ball fan. He was like, yeah. come out to New York, I wanna meet you. I'm like, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, and it was, it's just crazy the sort of things that we've been able to do because we've been attached to such an amazing show. Yeah, 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 exactly. Dude, I had a football player, like right before the pandemic, he called my business manager, he goes, hey, tell Sean I'll fly you guys out to Hawaii, just get in the plane tomorrow. I'm like, what are we doing while we're there? He goes, no, I got business meetings all day, but I just wanna fly you out and, and do it, and do it, and play. I'm like, I can't just randomly get on a plane the next day. I mean, I'm very honored he asked me, but that's a little bit more complicated for a guy like me to get on a plane the next day without knowing what's going on in right, Hawaii. Exactly. And he's got business meetings, are we just hanging on the beach and waiting for him? To, like, what are we doing? I, pro I, I regret not doing it though. I, I, would have, I really should have done it. Right. And, and Big Sean has invited me to concerts with him in Las Vegas twice, and I couldn't make it because of commitments, and I invited him to the last pr two premieres, and he couldn't make it because of commitments. But they all want to come. Yeah. Do you know one of our premieres, Ed Asner came? He was Ed on Asner yeah. came? Yeah, I think he came, wow. or he was on the list to come and didn't come, because I remember reading the list, I'm like, Ed Asner, apparently he liked, at the time, he's passed, I believe, right? Uh, I, think I think he's deceased now, but I love Ed Asner, and he likes to be at premieres with all the new cool stuff, apparently. That's what I'd heard, but I, I was tripping Dragon Ball Z thing? Yeah, Dragon Ball Z oh, premiere. Oh, oh. At the last there. Dragon Ball uh, yeah. premiere, I was sure. uh, sitting next to Jay Farrow, which yeah. was really, really crazy. We, we, we did some photos with him on the red carpet. Jay Farrow was there. Yes, yeah. nice. Well, everybody, I'm going to give them one more story. So if you want to start lining up for questions, now's your chance. So I'll give you a little few seconds here. So I have a story to share with you guys. So yeah, yeah, share the story. I split time between San Antonio and uh, New York City. Oh. Thank you, thank you guys. This is the, the, when the questions start, the coffee has to come. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's when it gets complicated. <laughs> so, I spent time between New York City and San Antonio. New York City, there is a gym there. Oh yeah. That they play on loop, Dragon Ball. On loop. Not movies, episodes. I, I, okay, so Chris and I are not terribly fit people. And I have come up with this idea called the circle of muscles. And the circle of muscles is this. Um, I, my doctor has made it clear that I have medical reasons to work out and I am not good at working out and I am started for a minute and then the rain hit and then I stopped but I'm going to start again but I noticed that what's happened is I do the voice for years and then it makes a bunch of guys go get really muscly and then they come to my table and shame me into not having muscles by simply having muscles and then it makes me want to go work out and so what I'm going to do hopefully if I don't procrastinate is I'm going to work out and chronicle it and then I'm gonna post it and I'm gonna call it the circle of muscles because like I scream, you get big muscles, you come shame me, I get big muscles. There you go. And that's the plan, circle of that's muscles. Yeah. So right. Chris, you gotta get the circle of muscles. Apparently all I'm supposed to do is yell at myself and I'm supposed to work out. That's how it works. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's Everyone it. tells me that's how they do it. I'm like, I've tried yelling at myself. That doesn't work, it just makes me tired. <laughs> all right, let's get it going. What's your name and your question? Uh, my name is Nick. Uh, Kind of got a two-part question. First one is uh, just what, I know this is probably something you guys get all the time at Comic-Cons, but for smaller areas that aren't like big with, you know, anime voice over stuff, like how do you guys like recommend like getting started? Well, no. How do you start voiceover just at, at, the, at the ground floor? Yeah, yeah. Well, depending on your voice and your skill set, it doesn't always have to be that way. My first audition was Dragon Ball. I don't know. Wow. Ever. Wow. I got so lucky. I didn't know I didn't know him. He just called him, hey, my name's Chris Seven, I'm working on Dragon Ball. <laughs> and uh, everyone who knows Chris does an impression of his voice, and he's very gracious <laughs> about letting us do it. His own daughters do an impression of it. So uh, but yeah, I didn't know him. Uh, and so it it depends on a lot of things. It's kind of a crapshoot. But if you want to get started, you know, a lot of voice actors in the Dallas Fort Worth area teach voice acting classes, having some gear, and since the pandemic. A lot of recordings remote now, so if you have a good home studio and you know how to use it, and you want to help them cut you together a demo, then you send that to an agent, and then if they start sending you work, you audition from home, and then you go to the gig, and then you realize how little money you're going to make, and then you think <laughs> twice about career choices, uh, and then 20 years later you have a room full of people, and you're glad you did what you did. So um, that's how good for me anyway. <laughs> I also, I, I would also add to that, um, wherever you are. Figure out what it is, why it is that you want to be a voice actor. Yeah. Figure out what it is that's motivating. Yes. Is it because you like anime, or is it because you, people have told you you have a nice voice, or it's because you like microphones, you like electronic equipment, which is, was the case for me. I grew up just playing with anything that could make sounds. I tried to make sounds with when I was younger, and it just, I just loved it. And um, no matter where you are, there's got to be somebody, unless you're just in a micro town. Uh, there's got to be somebody working in some sort of production. 
I, I don't know what sort of production is done here, like in San Antonio, but I'm sure there's a lot of films, there's commercial stuff here. Try, try to find a community, try and find, be involved in something, even intern at a place where production is done, at a TV station or a radio station, just to kind of feel out the industry, because there's so many jobs. I mean, I'm not trying to talk you out of being a voice actor. I think always keep that in the back of your mind. You train yourself up, learn how to speak on a microphone so your first audition is good, uh, and you're not freaking out with your headphones on the first time they ever put headphones on you because you've never done it before. Uh, find all the other things that you can do in town that are interesting and, and see what else is out there too because you want to make voice acting like the center of the dartboard but throw as many darts as you possibly can, right? Yeah. Thank you so much. Good question. All right. Up next, to me, young man, and your question. We have a, we have a mic stand. There we go. Yeah. Uh, my name is Grayson and uh, I have a question. Can you and John do a quick argument between Vegeta and Goku? Yeah. Yeah. He says he wants us to do an argument between Vegeta and Goku. Goku ain't the last taco. Goku, what's that? Who ate the last taco? How about that? Oh, that's a good one. He hit Gigi first. Vegeta, did you eat the last taco? What? Oh, what are you talking about? I've never you know eaten tacos I'm in happy, my life. And I need all the calories I need. Don't talk to me like that. I know you're the first Man. person out here every morning to eat all the tacos. You eat it so fast, for God's sake. But they're so good. I know they are. Did you try the Al Pastor? Yes, actually, it's I did. It's quite delicious. Look, I was eating a lot of the tacos. The I have honey to admit. chipotle. I blame Yamcha. What? <laughs> That was great. I'm, I have chills everybody right now. I'm also a big taco fans, and I eat them a lot, so I, I, had, I had some taco variations in my back pocket there. So, Sean, what's the deal? Like, do you, do, in a lot of pianos, do you usually have your bodyguard, like, protect I have my bodyguard instead of adjust the mic stand for you. That's a big yeah. dude there, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, your name and your question? Hi, Chris. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Sean. I, 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 Hello. Met, I met you two years ago, actually. At Fan Expo Dallas 2021. Oh, wow. And I met you last year at Big Texas. Oh, awesome. So, anyway, I have a question for each of you and one for both. My first is for Chris. Um, you voiced in one of my favorite animes called High School DxD. <laughs> a lot of people like that anime in this town. Like, a lot of people. Yeah. Boost! I am here. <laughs> I know. Anyway, you voiced Drake, who I love. He's so awesome. So, my the question is if All Might met Drake, how would he react if Drake were to give him the boosted gear armor? <laughs> um, uh, he'd be very happy, I suppose. Um, I, I thought so too, Sean. It's that's such a confusing question. Those two worlds colliding would be the most horrific I would, thing. I would love to see that if he fought against Vegeta or Goku. That would be an awesome fight. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff I like. Yes. That yeah. Would it's yeah. Drake is a is a naughty show. A bit oh, I thought you meant Drake the rapper. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> It's Drake with two Ds. It's oh, Drake. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's called the Grabbing Dragon. If that makes you any difference. There you go. Uh, <laughs> I'm Mental note that I'm Sean. Yeah, okay. My question for Sean is: Let's well, start it off, Chris. If, if, like, say one day Goku and Vegeta woke up, found out they switched bodies or lives, how would they react to that? Gosh, that's almost like when the Ginyu business. Um, yeah. I mean, I guess I could see go, ah, now I know I understand why you're such an asshole. Or he goes, man, I wish I was tall. I wish I was a boss. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No wonder you're so angry. You can barely see over yeah. the counter. It must really suck when I'm standing over you and talking over you like that. Makes you want to punch me in the face really hard. And my question for both of you is in, okay, in um, either for you, My Hero Academia or One Piece. And for you, Dragon Ball Z, what was your most favorite fight as either probably All Might or Zoro or Goku? All Might, uh, United States of Smash is my answer. Yes! Yes! yes. I, I, you know, someone asked me this question earlier today, and I, I, I there are some le epic, legendary fights, but I do think it, late, and my, my takes change as, as time goes on, but recently I thought, I thought it was kind of neat that at the end of the last movie, Whis is like, no Kamehameha's, no power-ups, and it was just a raw fisticuffs brawl. And I, I really enjoyed that from the perspective of a vocally, but also how it turned out was just kind of, really kind of refreshing. So lately, that's my favorite, but before that, it might have been um, between Google and Vegeta or just battle in general. 
I really enjoyed the Kale Khalifa business only because that cool Kamehameha I got to do. Um, uh, and I, of course, I enjoyed when Goku and Vegeta come together. Anytime they do, you know, Gallic Gun, Kamehameha together side by side, it's it's pretty great. My favorite fight is for you, Zoro versus Kaku, where you um, uh, first uses Asura. And I like where you, um, even though you got to a kid again, I like where you battle Android Super 17. Oh, and Super Dragon and Dragon Ball GT? Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah. was my favorite. Oh, that's a good, good one. Yeah, thank, yeah thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you for that question. All right, sir. Vegeta, your, uh, your Vegeta wakes up. Question? Vegeta um, wakes up in Goku's body, and he's just like, he first pretends to be really annoyed by it, but he keeps looking at himself in the mirror, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> It's like, I'll just need a minute. And I just realized that Chi Chi is such a me that he might like her. Yeah, he might. And he might go, she's like me. She's yelling and screaming all the time. <laughs> Why do you complain about her? She's, she's actually delightful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she says the things that are on my mind. No, no. <laughs> Hi, sir. Howdy, my name is uh, Sean. I uh, just want to start off saying I love the show. been watching y'all since I was just, you know, a little. Thank kid. you. And now I'm in my 30s. <laughs> yeah, we all have that problem. <laughs> so yes. I was making it almost in my 30s, and now I'm, you know. So my question is, before you were Goku and Vegeta, um, what was your first impression of Dragon Ball Z, and how did y'all prepare? Oh, I can tell you precise. I can answer this question precisely. So when we, I was a French horn teacher and performance-oriented hornist. I played symphonies and taught music in Dallas, and I would teach all day uh, little kids how to play the horn, and then I played my French horn at night or whatever. And when I got the call um, to audition, when I called them to audition, um, I looked up the show, because they told me what it was, and it was still airing on Cartoon Network, because we, and I didn't understand what was going on in terms of us replacing the Canadian cast, because they were moving production from Canada to Texas, and there was really no internet to record remotely effectively. And so I wasn't aware of that. Um, and so every, and I'm a big believer in preparing. I'm a big actor prepares. I mean, Stanislavski's not not wrong. Um, and so I went home after teaching all day, and I would watch Dragon Ball on Cartoon Network just to see what it was about, right? But the problem was, there was no internet for me to download video. I mean, there's internet, but I couldn't download videos. It was the only place I could get it. And it was the series of episodes where just Gohan and Piccolo in the forest, and and and, <laughs> and Piccolo's you know, raising Gohan where. Well, Goku's uh, being a, a deadbeat dead, and so um, and he so, was dead, arguably. It arguably, was dead. True, he was dead at the time. Maybe he was. Couldn't um, really help that. Too. Yeah, that's true. But I remember thinking, I can't do that low guy voice, and that's a kid. I'm never going to be on this show. There's only two characters on the show, like because there was just that. It was very little, and I and I did not. Know, and by the time I got to the audition, they threw all these other characters at me to audition for. I, I mean, I, that's all I could deal. That's the best I could muster to find out about it so i was really shocked when when he called me and said you're goku i was like oh man because i didn't know goku was the lead character uh, and i and at the time i like I, the idea of voice acting for me because i grew up around rich little and robin williams and, and eddie murphy and, and bill cosby changing their voices a lot to me voice acting was all about changing your voice and it's not but i thought so at the time so uh i remember thinking oh because i like doing my, my i thought my captain guinea audition was really good and I was like, oh man, I really want to, and I would change my voice the most on it. So I'm like, told Chris, I was like, hey man, are you sure about that? Because I really like that Captain Ginyu part. He's like, oh, trust me, you're gonna like this part. Because he was trolling me at the get-go, because he, he didn't tell me until two weeks into recording, when I was trying really hard, he's like, Sean, you do realize you're the main character on this show. And I'm like, I am? Wow! <laughs> like, I was totally going through Such a Goku moment. What, what, was... what, what do your Captain Ginyu sound like? What was that? What was your Captain Ginyu? Oh, I can't. Oh. I go, change now! Or something like that. I don't remember. That's me copying Dale Kelly, I think. <laughs> hey, he was like this, kind of. I can't remember what it was. It was like 25 years ago, but. You would have been copying the, the Canadian version. Yeah, I, would have, I don't know what that one sounds like. I, would, I wouldn't have been copying Dale Kelly. The, yeah, my first impression of Dragon Ball, uh, well, the first thing I ever did was Yamcha on this Dragon Ball movie, like a Sleeping Princess in Devil's Castle, which was. Woo! Ah, and I was only in the booth for, you know, a few hours or something like that. So my first impression was like, wow, this is weird. Um, and then right after doing that, I was brought in, because I had no clue what I was doing. I didn't even know it was called Dragon Ball. They didn't even really tell me much of anything. I just went in, did the thing, and, and then right, it was apparently a test to see if they could start dubbing this stuff in Dallas. So they, they reached out to me and like, Chris, would you be interested? Or, Chris, would you be interested in coming in? You know, doing, helping us uh, cast and direct this uh, Dragon Ball show. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. Uh, we'll pay you $20,000 a year. I'm like, what? Get out of here. Yes, absolutely. And so um, I took the job and I remember like the first day they handed me this trash bag 
that had a bunch of VHS tapes in it that had like a lot of the series in it. They're like, here's Sam, let's go and watch all the stuff. And I'm like, okay. And as I'm walking out, they have these these uh, uh, wall scrolls that all of you have. Every single one of you has one of these. Those like uh, those rough texture uh, wall scrolls. I feel like sandpaper that have those five different images of Goku and Vegeta and all that. They, yeah. Anyway, they had them all hanging up around the the entrance to the building. I'm like, so um, so who's that guy? And they go, oh, well, that that's Goku. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'm like, who's the who's the one with the blonde hair? And he goes, well, that's also Goku. I'm like, that's weird. <laughs> Okay. How about the how about the uh, the little one? Oh, that's that's also Goku as well. <laughs> Does this show where only have one guy? Is this like, some uh, hairstyling yeah, show? Doing, I mean, it's, it's like you know. so bonkers. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Thank Appreciate you. that. Yeah. Thank you. Hello there, little man. Hello. What's your name? Uh, my name is Britton. And your name is Britton, like the country. Yeah. That's awesome. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, so. I wanted to do something like where you both have the same voice, same everything, except you swap personalities. So you still have the same voice, except instead of Christopher being Vegeta or like the attitude, he beats Goku. And then <laughs> That's pretty much how me and Chris fight if we have a conflict. I fight like Vegeta and he's really nice, generally. Um, but yeah, uh, well, I did that as Goku Black, kind of, but I used a British accent, and I see the point. Can we can we do that? I wonder if we could. I, I don't know. I don't know how to be nice. Uh, as, <laughs> yeah, I was trying to be mean as Goku. A nice Vegeta, yeah. Uh, Bring me a drying cloth, woman! Like, remember that one? That one <laughs> yes. From the show? He says, <laughs> that's what I think of. My name is Vegeta, <laughs> and I am a Super Saiyan <laughs> from Earth. <laughs> That's so weird. That is so real. That's so real. I am everybody's friend. One time, I... <laughs> and I hate everyone. Wait, um, um, one time I tried to do someone's... I was, I was listening to Masako Nozawa, the legendary voice of Goku from Japan, of course, and I was trying to see if I could do Masako's voice with my English. Because she does kind of... She has this really unique, wonderful, like... <laughs> I can't speak Japanese very well, but I was trying to go... Hey, it's me, Goku! Like in... With her, kind of trying to, you know, I was trying to do it. I was like, it was really weird to try to do that as as the Moscow is out, you know. But uh, it was kind of surreal. It's the only other time I've tried something like that. But that's a good question. Wow, that guy is super strong. <laughs> I should think about it for a while. And my friends are in trouble, but I should probably finish doing what I'm doing first, and then go by and save them later. <laughs> Here comes Yamcha. <laughs> Thank you, young man. Appreciate that was that. fun, that was dude. Great job, Britain, everyone. Lovely. Well, sir, what's your Brilliant. name? Brilliant. Is your older brother uh, from First <laughs> off, first off, you dropped your sensor bean? What's that? He's gonna do a trick on you guys. I don't see a sensor bean. Oh, he, he did a gotcha. He did oh. a gotcha. Oh. <laughs> you dropped your bean. I got, he got gotcha. And uh, second off, from what saga is your favorite fight scene? Oh, gosh. Um, I mean, I one of the most poignant ones I think is is uh, the Majin Vegeta business where Goku's really trying to convince Vegeta to not be evil and cheat, and Vegeta cold cocks him in the back of the head and minus knocks him out. Fact, you minus know, the, minus the fact that he had Goku pinned against the rock and she just beat pinned, him. Right? Pinned against the rock? What'd you say? What? Yeah, uh, Majin Vegeta Majin had, had Vegeta. Goku pinned against. Oh, the I thought you were the Rock Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't see that episode. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming in the next yeah, well, one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this one is for Christopher. Can you give me a, 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 like an inspiration? You know, like a... Don't do drugs! <laughs> Hard drugs are the legal ones. Wait, didn't you have a shirt that said, say perhaps to drugs? Well, yes, because <laughs> you need to be more specific about it. About right? what you're saying no to. Right, because that would, uh, that would be aspirin. all aspirin and all like, uh, over the counter. And then my final question is how you feel about Yamcha dying a lot. I think it's great. It <laughs> uh, I, I think Yamcha is a representation of uh, the bully, what Kira Toriyama feels about the bully that maybe bullied him. That maybe feel, made him feel a lot better, <laughs> better actually, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, Yamcha is a great character, and I'm, I'm stealing this bit from somebody I heard online, and it was, she was very poignant about this. She, she had this picture, she was an artist, she had a picture of Yamcha up behind her, and she was like, 
all you guys making fun of me because I got a picture of Yamcha up behind me because you guys saying that he's lame and stuff like that. But I want you guys to shut up because I like Yamcha. You know why I like Yamcha? Because sometimes you just wake up, you know, and I'm just not that guy. You know, and sometimes you know you're just not him. It's just not your day. And now I think about how crappy Yamcha's life was, I feel a lot better. Like, so you can use Yamcha as the baseline for how bad it gets and always feel good about yourself. You can always tell yourself, at least I'm not Yamcha. Exactly. There you go. That's gonna be the next meme. At least I'm not Yamcha. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you, son. Appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, your name and question. Oh, hi. Uh, my name is uh, Joseph, and uh, I was just wondering, like, uh, uh, have, what, have you seen that meme of where your character Goku, like, he was just about to, you know, at attack someone, or someone's about to attack him, and then it goes, it goes into the Prowler's theme for Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse, and it shows your character on the cover of X Universe Two, like he's showing oh, his serious, okay. his, his serious face, like he's just like, oh, I'm gonna kill you. Now. I have not seen that. Yeah, I haven't yeah, seen that seen one either. No, yeah. I haven't either. Yeah. Oh, it's it's funny. Homework. <laughs> this would be one of those moments question. where it'd be great if we had like yeah, a, yeah. a screen share up above yeah, us yeah. so people yeah. go, "Have you seen this?" <laughs> I was like, "I have it right here." I mean, I don't know. You can come over with yeah. us, just flash it to him. Yeah, sure. Here, just flash it. Yeah. There was this one panel. This is not you, by the way, but there was this one panel. It was like a uh, My Hero Academia panel, and there were like, it was a huge panel, Fan Expo, and there were about twenty people on stage. It was one of the biggest. My Hero Academia panels we've ever been on. And there was one kid that came up, he's like, hey guys, have you ever seen this video online? And he goes, watch it, watch it real quick. And he holds it up and it's like this really long video and the moderator didn't stop him. It was just going, <laughs> just like playing the whole thing and we're all just staring at each other like, we can't hear it, we can't really see it at all. It was so awkward. All right, well, he's uh, looking for it right now. We'll, we'll give you like 10 yeah. minutes because yeah. I know there's no reception in this yeah. building, so. All right, ma'am. Hi. Hi, so um, I've been following Dragon Ball Z for like a long time and what I noticed is that there's a really good balance between like the fighting but also domestic scenes with wives and children and yes. families yeah. and friends. So um, which scenes do you guys like doing more? The family at home scenes or the fight scenes? I like family home scenes and comedy and the goofy stuff with Goku more than the fight scenes generally. Uh, especially when Goku is socially awkward and you know doesn't understand uh, t cell phones or anything, cars, cars, just anytime it's or he's outside the house scared to go in the house because Chi Chi's in there. You know, I like that. I mean, there's epic moments as watching the show. The fights are incredible. Like yes, the fight, watching probably it, one of the yeah. coolest things is just yeah. watching the fights. But working on the show, I love any moment that isn't the fighting too. Like Piccolo in the. A superhero movie where he's got his phone and he hold he, he has this dumb it, yeah. this goofy phone yeah. case and he holds yeah. his phone like this all the time or like he always holds it. yeah it's great but where he like sneaks back into the base he's like sorry I had to go to the bathroom and then that becomes like this joke with the rest of the guards like hey man I'm sorry you weren't feeling well earlier but uh but I think the best adjustment you gave to the script in superhero is you referred to uh, go on or no go no, pants teacher by your first name. That is true. That was not actually in the Japanese. Because it implies that he's constantly have to picking up Pan at school because nobody's available. <laughs> so, uh, it was probably something no one even, well, actually some people noticed because there's a lot of fan fiction about it right now. But like, I had put, when Piccolo goes to pick up Pan, he goes to get her from the, uh, and he, in the original script it was like, Sorry, ma'am, I gotta pick up Pan today or whatever, but I changed it to, sorry, Janet, I uh, gotta pick up Pan, <laughs> which sounds so familiar. And like the idea, like he picked her up so much, he was on a first name basis with her. Teacher, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's those moments that are fun. All right, he All found right. the meme. He All right, so you'll know you're gonna be able to see this. this. None of the rest of you will be yeah. able to see this. There's, there's Frieza. <laughs> And that's from the, that's from the Spider-Man part. Like, oh, I can't hear that very well. I, that's why I didn't get it. It just doesn't. Hang on. Yeah, when you've been screaming in your ear for twenty years, you kind of lose your hearing. Oh, that makes more sense. That's dark. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Thank you for that. Yeah. I'm surprised there hasn't been a, a Frieza parody of like, well, that's an old joke, like Shock the Monkey. Shock the Monkey. Um, from <laughs> Peter Gabriel. Never mind. It's old reference. Personally, sorry. my favorite domestic scene with Vegeta of all people is telling Goku straight up, "Sorry, I can't go to this big fight because 
my wife's about to have another baby. And so, <laughs> yes. and I'm like, what? I'm like, I forgot about that. I was in like my mid-20s when that happened, and I remember being seven and be like, he would never do that. Right. <laughs> now I'm an adult, and I'm like, he's missing out on a fight to go to a family thing? That you never would imagine that would happen. Like the Mike Balma scene was probably the next. Like so, there were two moments in Vegeta's like evolution. One, him blowing up in front of uh, like sacrificing himself for his entire family, and the second one just screaming his wife's name really loudly when she gets slapped. That was oh, pretty yeah. dope. That and then Goku was, just slaps intense. his own wife through the house wall <laughs> and she hits the tree. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> ah. right, thank you for that question. Who's next? What's your name? Uh, my name is Michael, and I have two questions. Uh, how would you react to if Zoro got lost and ran into Luffy and King Kai? No, Luffy. Goku and King Kai. Re re reacting to what? How would Zoro react to running into Goku and King Kai after getting lost? Uh, this is exactly how I'd react. And this is both in the Japanese and the English version. I'm telling you, this is exactly what would happen. Eh? <laughs> That's all Zoro does when he sees something. He just goes, yeah. And he wouldn't have much to say, actually. Go, like, who are these losers? <laughs> That'd be about it. All right. I'm lost. And then my second question is, who would y'all be tournament of power team for all of anime? Like, who would be your team for for the tournament? Oh of gosh, power for all anime. That's a good one. Top five guys. And the, 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 so it'd be the, pick the top five fighters in anime to. Oh, in all of anime. Yeah. All of anime. Well, you got Goku and Vegeta for sure. Yep. But perhaps yeah. Broly. Um, Perhaps. depending if depending, yeah, Perhaps. depending on com but depending it's a wild card. He hasn't proven himself yet. Apparently not uh, you got one punch man. Uh, you got maybe uh, uh, maybe Naruto. I just I don't know how powerful Naruto is in is powerful in the relative power scaling of the universe. I'm trying to think of anybody else. Uh, like Luffy's uh, pretty powerful. I would say uh Poir, maybe Oolong. <laughs> Minetta yeah. and uh, Gregory, Gregory and Bubbles. Yeah, Gregory and Bubbles. Oh, there, there you go. go. Boom. Yeah. Do you know there was this thing for a while, and I don't know if they're still doing it, but it was actually really fun. There was this thing these people did online called DBZ League, and they would basically take the Dragon Ball Z uh, Budokai Tenkaichi, the one that had every single character known to man in it, and they would uh, set up this tournament structure where people would set up these uh, teams, just like you asked us to do. And you would structure the team and you would give them the skills that you had all access to all of their skills and you would put them all on a team and then they would watch the computer play them and then they had like live commentators <laughs> and it was really fun because like sometimes shouts would be awesome or whatever so that's it, clever it was really fun yeah. like I, you, if cool. they're still around I right. hope they're still doing it all right thank you sir appreciate that <laughs> I think your name and Hello. your question Hello, my name is Chelsea. Um, first off, I do want to give you guys these. These are like little lawsuits I'm handing out to people. What's in them? Uh, friendship bracelets and stickers. Okay. Okay. Well, heck yeah. yeah like Why not? Sean and I will give them to each other. Oh, yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. That was, that was awesome. There you go. Best oh. friends forever. <laughs> and this is my, lovely. And will you be friends with me? Look, they're being friends. Yeah, give, me, give me yours, man. I just gave you mine. Don't skip out, man. I want the whole thing. Yeah, they're identical, but I'll know it was yours. And my question is, of all the animes y'all have worked on, did y'all have a female character that made you blush when you had to react to her? Um, oh, wait. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, you pulled a piccolo. Um, I can tell you a, a related story that involves hentai, if you're interested. Um, and it's not terribly dirty. It's not, it's not for any kids in the audience, but it's, it's not terribly, it's not really dirty. But I, I was asked, and early in my career, I, I learned a lot about myself as an actor. Early in my career, one or two years into it, when I was working at NYV Post or somewhere, I can't remember what studio it was, and, they had gotten a project for a hentai, and I was not working on it, I was directing something else, and we get into a pinch sometimes, and we have a need for Walla, and Walla's background voices. It's all those sounds that, you, and she can almost say anything in Walla, because it's mixed so quietly. So they go, hey, there's this demon sex scene with a bunch of appendages. I'm not gonna use those words, but you know what appendages I'm talking about. And, and uh, we just want you to come in, and, and could you just, M Michael asked me, he's like, would you please just do some backgrounds? I'm in a pinch, could you do it? And I go, fine, I don't do, and I, I'm too uncomfortable. And I don't judge it, I'm like, if you wanna watch it, that's fine, it's just, you know, I'm just uncomfortable. And so I get in the booth, 
And I, I realize that I tend to shift into character as the beeps are happening. And so I go from being in myself into the show. And so I'm having, they say, well, just do some moaning in the background. I'm like, okay. Um, and so I put the headphones on. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this. And there's a different director there. And he's like, all right, we're gonna roll. Just do background moaning, it's great. And it went boop, boop. And by the, before I got to the third beep, I felt my brain shifting into demon appendage land and moaning, and um, I threw the headphones off and ran out of the booth. <laughs> and I said, I'm sorry, I can't do this. I'm freaking out. And that's when I learned a lot about myself. So that made me blush quite a bit, <laughs> to answer your question. <laughs> what are you, Chris? Uh, man, I, I don't know. There's a, there's a deep separation between like the characters on the screen, and because I, I work with them so often that, that I, I don't know. I'm trying to think. Uh, man, uh, I cannot think of any. I do okay. think it's really weird. Like, so if any of you like date somebody and then later on get married to somebody else and you have a child, <laughs> it's really uncool, Krillin, to name somebody after the girl you dated. Like, <laughs> to name your daughter after the girl that you dated in an, an earlier saga was such a weird. I mean, that's flex. that's Adam Levine's. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't help it. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's a great singer. Great Good question. But, Thank you. Sorry. Thank you so much. <laughs> hey, young man, your name? Hi. A question? I'm Mason. Hey, Mason. Mason, how you doing? Good. How about you? I'm oh, good. Thanks. We're good. Good. We're on a panel. Yeah. So I wanted you guys to um, reenact as Goku and Vegeta if Goku stole Bulma from Vegeta. Oh. Well, I couldn't reenact that because that would be a completely implausible scenario because Goku even doesn't even know what kissing is according to Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> So I don't even know if I could even probably do that because Goku would have no interest in that whatsoever unless Bulma was a good fighter. <laughs> You're a strong fighter. Uh, uh, Are you stealing my woman, Kakarot? No. Okay. <laughs> That's what I thought. Thank you. Look at this t-shirt up next, Chris. That's great. Look at that, Kurt. Look at that. Oh, I like that. That's a good one. Your name? Uh, hello, my name is Nathan. Uh, I have a question for Chris. Uh, how does it feel being like the go-to deep manly voice actor? <laughs> it was well, it was nice to be one of the only deep voices at Funimation for about 15 years. So they they only started. I mean, maybe about 10 years ago they started finding other guys with a deep voice. So I was very lucky. So any show that would come up, I'd just go like, oh, I'm just waiting for the first deep guy, like voice guy to come up, and I know I've got a job. So uh, when you were, you told me when you were a young man. Right yes. when you hit puberty, your voice had dropped, and it you were did. underage, but you allowed you to have access to a various oh, adult yes. conversations and or situations because they thought you were much older. 100%. <laughs> uh, and you were like in junior high school, I I was definitely very, between 6th uh, and 7th, like 6th and 7th grade, my voice dropped to basically what it is now. I was about 11 years old with this voice, so I, I could, it was weird, and I could call up my school and go, I'm sorry, Chris isn't doing really well today. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and keep him home for this afternoon. And, uh, and you know what, when I did that, here's what happened. I was trying to play hooky with my girlfriend in like 10th grade, and I tried to do an impression of my dad, it was so bad. The girl who's just a high school girl working the phones goes, you are now truant, we are calling, she dropped me, just called it out, it totally did not work. It totally did not work, but it worked for you. All right. I was also really lucky, because I grew up in the era where there was no caller ID, and, and there was no way of knowing who called you at all. There were, I could call anybody, I could open up the phone book, call anybody, and they would never know who I was. Um, and so that was a beautiful thing, because all I did most of my childhood was just pick up the phone book and prank call people all day. <laughs> That's all I love to do. Thank you, good question. Oh, thank you. Do you know what's funny? I, I prank called my friend's mother so many times. Uh, <laughs> that the, first, the, the only time, she was so nice, and the only time she ever snapped back was when I called and I was like, oh, may I speak to Carl, please? And she goes, right, okay, why don't you come over, big boy, or something stupid like that? <laughs> and the guy was like, excuse me, ma'am? And she goes, and it wasn't me, apparently. Ah, so, so she tried to call you out when she, and it yeah, wasn't she you. she tried to call me out and it was not me. So she <laughs> was embarrassed, you're welcome. <laughs> Your name and question? Hi guys. Hey. Hello. My name is Thomas. Hi Thomas. I've always kind of wondered, has the success of DBZ ever gotten to your head? And have you ever like used your voices 
Like talk to yourself, I guess. Talk, oh, gone to my head, not in a big ego way, but in a in my head, head, like it in my, you, like, in you my brain. The character. Like give yourself a pep talk. Oh, oh, to use the. Uh, honestly, and this is gonna sound like a total lip service, but honestly, it's it's my fans who are the most inspiring. You guys, because I meet you guys all the time, and all that light up energy you give to me, I'm like, it affects me when I get home or at that later that day. So it's kind of like that. But as far as like. Go to my head. I can say the opposite has been true. During the pandemic, there's al it always feels like an awesome weight and responsibility of being associated with the character. And sometimes you just want to break from it to remember who you are. Um, so it's gone to my head in the sense that I have to often think of my brain and memories in my life before I was Goku to remember my, the roots of myself. And I do that a lot on purpose. And then during the pandemic, I was walking around and our particular neighborhood we live in was so shut down, it looked like a post-apocalyptic, like everyone's houses were empty, but they weren't, but they didn't seem like they were. And for a second, for a split second, I, I'd forgotten I'd played Goku. I was just kind of not in the headspace. And I was really relieved. And I don't mean that in a bad way. I love playing Goku, but the amount of energy and responsibility over 25 years you know, can weigh on you. And I was like, then it popped in my head. I'm like, oh wait, I play that guy. Oh, whoa, and then all of the whole world comes, you know, crashing down you, good and bad, you know, all the whole history of it. And it, it, look, trust me, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me, but it, it doesn't come without pain and, and it, it's got a, it's a whole roller coaster, the whole thing. And I would say, I owe my own personal growth to this show, being able to just grow as a human to this show. Um, and that's been very beneficial to me, just to mature as I'm playing the character. I was a pretty, pretty immature guy when I got the show. I was pretty much a 12 year old trapped in a 30 year old's body when I, when I got the show. And so, Spent a lot of money on therapy since then, so it's been it's been a very uh, like a lot, uh, like 20 years of it. But it's been it's been Chris has been there the whole ride for me, and I'm grateful for his friendship because of it. So it's uh, uh it's been like that. If that's the best way I can answer your question, but yeah, but never in like you can do this, Sean. You can do this, Sean. You, you're like, like it's never in that, you know. So. <laughs> what are you, Chris? Man, it, you have to understand that like we have definitely played these characters forever, but it never really felt. Like we, we never really took a lot of ownership over these characters for, I mean, it took a, a really long time. It wasn't until maybe even Battle of Gods came out that, and we actually started meeting the Japanese, uh, the producers and the directors and, and some of the, the actors from the original show. That was the only time, that was the first time it really dawned on me that, that we, like Sean had mentioned earlier, that we actually had some real part in making this happen. Because um, we, at the time, weren't going to a lot of conventions to meet you all just yet. Uh, it was, it, I mean, it was very humbling. Like we, when we first started, panels were not like this. Oh, they were not. I would sit on the edge of the stage, it'd be like five or 10 people. Yeah, and, I mean, and five of them were only there to insult you, because they go, <laughs> yeah. they go, why did you guys change the music? I'm like, I don't know, it wasn't my decision. Like, why did you call it Special Beam Cannon and not Makan Kosapo? I'm like, I don't know, because people don't speak Japanese. You said Ko Ken. I go, my producer said it was pronounced Ko Ken because he's from Texas, and I, I fixed it after that. You know, so. so, for the longest time, we, I mean, I, I really only thought of us as, I mean, we loved what we did, and we tried to do the best job we could. It was a great job, and it was a super fun job, it was a very painful job. But it, still, at the end of the day, we would go home and go like, we're still the English language option of a Japanese show, right? Yeah. And, uh, and now we hear things like some people will watch it more in English than Japanese sometimes, yeah. you know, which is really flattering. Um, and I think for me, when I moved to LA, it was really surreal. Two things happened that were surreal. And I think what happened when we did Battle of Gods, and even before that, I my girlfriend worked did analytics for a company and she looked at my Google Analytics and she's like, you know your videos have been watched like 36 million times. And this is in 2011 when I met her. This is before Battle of Gods or whatever. And then I remember after we moved to LA, I was going to the DMV to get my license and I'm just walking, waiting in line. Some guy walks over and goes, hey man, you got a guy please go to? And I'm like, I'm just getting my license, you know? Just like the like, driving episode, right? And then one time a friend of mine had visited me from out of town and it was midnight. He wanted to go to a bar. I don't really drink much, but he wanted to go to a bar. We're walking across the street in, in Valley Village where I used to live. We're literally walking across York World Canyon. Some kid walks by, he's like 18, 20 years old. He's like out late. And we're walking to this bar and he goes, hey, go, go, woo, yeah! And I'm like, what? And I, this, just a random guy. So then I start going, what the hell is going on? And then they videotape us in the booth. And so then, you know, I always like to say, well, I'm not an on-camera actor because nobody knows, but because of all the YouTube videos, et cetera, et cetera, I get recognized quite a bit. Um, and it's also flattering. And I, I can't even use a Goku wallet. I used to have a Goku wallet, but every time I get out of Starbucks, they see the Goku wallet 
and then they would uh, kind of put two and two together, and then the next thing you know, yeah, you got a Goku wallet. I, I, I'm talking about Dragon Ball for 20 minutes when I just want to get my coffee, um, <laughs> and, and so I had to stop using wallets. It's not that I want to have those conversations, and I try to keep it on the DL. Like I, I go, oh, no, I'm just, I'm an actor. I, I, I hear that. And two times in the last three weeks, I called customer service because I thought my account was getting hacked. I called the fraud department at Bank of America. Halfway through the call, he goes, wait, are you? Are you sure chill? I'm like, oh yeah, no, I'm just trying to see. Goes, Wait, hang on, I gotta calm down. I gotta calm down. I'm like, you're the fraud department and you gotta calm down? Aren't you just a scary shit? It's like, what is going on? Saying I called the headphone company, Odd Easy. I was having my headphones repaired. Hey, I'm not sure your email has a Japanese, because I use a Japanese word in my email because I was geeking out when I got the part. And are you a voice? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you go, oh my God. I'm like, what the hell's going on here? And it's always flattering and it's always amazing and it feels really good, but it's also something that you know, it, it, it's one of those, it's a thing, you know, you gotta navigate, it's challenging, but wonderful. I guess that's the only way I can say it's in my head in some ways, that, that's a weird long answer, but I hope it was entertaining enough. <laughs> if, there's, if there's any short answer to that at all, it's just basically, when I, after I've recorded Vegeta for a while in the booth, I am noticeably angrier when I step out of the booth. Like, and it's, it's because it's painful, it is a very painful, difficult character to do, and he usually has difficult subject matter and uh yeah it affects me only in that way really all right thank you it's a good question good question yeah thanks good. thank you what's that Kyle Ken. Kyle Ken. <laughs> hello ma'am your name and your question hello my name is Bianca and I have a question and it's okay if you say no I just thought I'd ask um I have uh I made some cookies and I wanted to know if you wanted some I can't do gluten and dairy generally because of, but if, but I can maybe have a nibble, unless you put drugs in them. Then no. <laughs> you can't. Unless no, you're joking. allergic to nuts. I mean, I made some without nuts. Oh, I'm not allergic to nuts, but are you allergic to? I'm, nuts? I'm cookie intolerant. You're so cookie intolerant. I'm joking. No, that'd be that'd be light. That'd be lovely. I mean, it'd be lovely to at least taste them. Just to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I don't like, like want to eat them right now because I don't want to start trying to eat them right now. Because I don't want to start tripping at this moment. I want to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah. I want to yeah. eat them right now because I don't want to start tripping at this moment. I want to. Yeah, yeah. That'll be like. I, I, I like eating. I want to drop with the people I know, really, like, at the same time. I do like eating Entenmann's chocolate chip cookies and Doritos at the same time. Oh, thank you. I played French horn in his movies, who became a composer in LA, and he worked on Batman the Animated Series, wrote the theme for Batman Beyond. His name's Chris Carter, and then he's written a bunch of other stuff for various uh, animated shows and Marvel shows for decades now. He's very prolific. Um, and uh, wait, what was the question? Hang on, because I want to get to the part in a second. Uh, like, is there like any like voice actor? Like, oh yes, yeah. Mel Blanc, uh, Frank Welker, uh, Rich Little, uh, Robin Williams, Eddie Murphy, Bill Cosby, um, anybody who did like any of those guys, particularly Mel Blanc. Every time I think I'm getting good at voice acting, I listen to Mel Blanc on any Bugs Bunny, and I'm like, I still suck. <laughs> He's so good. He's so. Oh, and, and the Simpsons cast, especially Dan Castellaneta and uh, Harry Shearer, is amazing. All those guys, they're unbelievably great voice actors. Yeah, definitely inspiring. Cool. Absolutely. I think he's covered all the bases there, yeah. honestly. Exactly. Yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, got a, maybe like two two more questions left? Okay, sorry. Hi, sorry. Hi, um, hi, my name is Abigail, and, uh, and my question is, uh, who's your favorite character and why? And if it's the character that you play, um, is it because of their personality, or is it just because you play with it? Play the character. Are you mean? Who's my favorite character and why? In any world, not just Dragon Ball. Uh, no, Dragon Ball. Just in Dragon Ball? Yeah, Dragon Ball. I mean, look, I tend to like the fun little side tiny characters like Gregory and Bubbles a lot. But if I had to pick one of the major characters, I have been a Piccolo fan since before he got his day in court on Dragon Ball Superhero. And Chris gave me an autographed Piccolo action figure in 2002 when I moved to New York, and it still sits on my shelf to this day. Um, so I'm definitely a big Piccolo fan in that regard. Vegeta's awesome, but if I had to pick a different character, it'd probably be. Trunks, because I really like uh, Trunks. I thought the sword is pretty dope. Yeah. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, uh, this will be our last question. So go ahead. Uh, hi, my name is Abel. Um, I was just wondering if y'all ever done the fusion dance in real life. <laughs> um, I think we did it once, maybe at one show we did. Yeah, it, once. it didn't turn out. Uh, our fingers, our fingers didn't touch one another properly. Yeah, so we we were a hideous creation. Yeah, it was it was awful. Terrible. <laughs> all right, that's all right. Well. Gentlemen, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Thank Everybody you so much. Again. Wonderful. We're going to go out. Chris Thank you. Josh Chamel, Voices of thank you. Goku and Vegeta. Thank you guys. Thank you.